This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Hello Jeff. Save 20% off your first meal box with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 474. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I'm Jim. I'm Brian. And I'm Scab Jeff. Is that what I? Yes, you're myself? Scab Jeff. Yes. <laughs> when everyone's here, you're just Scab Jeff. Okay. Film critic, author, to the stars, non-floppy winner. Scab Jeff is here. Wait, I, I didn't. I didn't listen to the floppies. Did I win this year? Yeah, I didn't listen either. I still get a chance to vote for them, don't I? Blake, you won. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Scab Jeff. <laughs> you won, Blake, for best Jeff. <laughs> so. It was, a, it was an upset. I don't know how I didn't win. You weren't nominated this year because you have so many floppies. <laughs> I've so. won one floppy my entire career. One more than Scab Jeff. Well, yes. His wife has two more than him. And, and you know which floppy I won? What's that? Best Impression. I know. So I won it only so you could, would lose it. Was that Best Impression of a Jeff? <laughs> no, just Best Impression overall. Jeff. It was pretty much... Not Jason. I want it for not being Jason. That's a pretty good reason to win one. If I, I even voted for him. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I did. Damn it. Uh, yeah, so we're here. Everybody's here. Uh, so here's the great thing. Uh, our uh, b- booking agency screwed up and did not book uh, Scab Jeff last week. Or for the floppies. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did, we did, Jim, you did get uh, permission to bring Jim or Jeff onto this show. Yes, I got permission, but no one invited him. Yeah, no one put the call out, so our booking agency sucked. I, I heard he was boycotting us, actually. Scab Jeff was boycotting and said, boycott Hobie. You didn't see that hashtag? I did not. I saw him outside the window. It was, it was because of the sexual abuse that I have. Down the hall. <laughs> down the hall. Down the hall. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so well, hold on a second. Yeah. Did Wait, is your Scab- name Weinstein? <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 uh, Brand, uh, Brendan Fraser, and and you guys are the Hollywood Foreign Press. I <laughs> hey, don't talk about Jeff stroking your lower. Never mind. Oh. hey, um, so didn't, don't you have like another uh, ghost story thing that uh, happened recently, or another presentation? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't looking at me when you were. <laughs> we're sharing a microphone, so this is awkward. But you weren't looking at me. What do you mean, a uh, ghost? Didn't I see that you were doing another uh, ghost of like local Cincinnati or something like that in, in October? The library in at, October. Oh, yeah. some pr- well, there you go. Presentations at libraries. See, yeah, during Halloween. Uh, yeah, Last during year. Halloween season, like every year, I, I, I do. Wait, wait, you don't do that for Golden Globe season. Uh, n- I should. <laughs> I you definitely should, should. You should do that at the library. Just start talking the Golden Globes. Um, ghosts of the Golden, the oh. ghosts of the Golden Globes. Um, we let this guy speak once. He's come back every week. We <laughs> can't get rid of him. <laughs> spare spare than the guy uh, pleasuring himself in the corner. It's fine. It's fine. The, <laughs> using the free internet. <laughs> Ooh, apples and girls. Oh. You know what I'm doing over here. Sorry, my man. Sorry, Blake. Um, so yes, yeah, so we off to a good start. <laughs> yep. 
you know, the good news is, though, uh, Jeff, Scam Jeff, is going to do a great job. He's going to uh, pick his Golden Globe nominations. Unfortunately, they're also going on at the same time, so he is not allowed looking at his phone. So, so this could be live. As soon as one one gets announced, yes. you could say, what do you think won this? Jim, start looking at the Golden and Globe And then you could say, wrong. <laughs> Shouldn't we like uh, live feed Jen into this uh, podcast? <laughs> see if she could do. It. See if she could do a better job. Oh, I'm sure she could. <laughs> but you know, but we'd be like on a delay, so she'll know the answers beforehand. So she could get like a hundred percent. I will picks. S- <laughs> Jen got these all right, Jeff. I don't know what your problem is. I will say, Scab Jeff did a great job last year for the Oscars. He was at like eighty five percent for us, I think. Here, I still didn't win the trophy at my party. No, you did not. <laughs> Who won that? That would be me. Oh, congrats! I think it's over there. Yep. Oh, can we get a third one this year in the Bob Studios? A third trophy? We can uh, try. We can try. Maybe if you show up, you can win one. How about maybe? He, he's putting out the invitation now. Is he? Because he didn't say it. Would you like to come to my Oscar party? Do I have to watch the Oscars? Uh, you the don't Os- have to. You do not. Absolutely do not have to. <laughs> they I- will be on. Whether you watch them or not is irrelevant. Will I be... Uh, will I have to watch any of the Oscar movies beforehand? Yes. You definitely do not. I don't think I watched any of them before last year. I'm, I'm a maybe. Brian and I were talking about doing a D&D night that night. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Don't bring up D&D. So, so what you're saying is you'll be done after 15 minutes and come to the Oscar party. It's going to be a marathon. We got, like, a whole marathon that night, at least 45 minutes of it. At least 45. Since 2020, I have seen every single movie nominated for an Oscar. Wow. Which is not an easy thing to do. It is impressive. <laughs> because it, as soon as they announce them, we're like, every weekend we watch seven or eight movies, which holy is cow. brutal. Would you, seven or eight a weekend? Would you watch a Medea film if it was nominated? Yeah, we've watched much worse than Medea films. <laughs> <seven hours. laughs> what do you think is the worst film you've seen for the Oscars? Ever? Ever? Yeah, like in the last three years. Uh, Schindler's Lit. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one last year we were talking about with the creepy song? Oh, yeah. That, well, that was a long uh, time ago. Yeah. Uh, the, just this weekend, Jen bought me the the vinyl album for Gigi that has the... Thank heavens. Thank, for little thank heavens for little girls. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they're six, five or six, they... <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's awful. <laughs> Um, so what do you think of the worst film is in the last three years you saw for the Oscars? Mm, that's tough a, call. Uh, if I'd have time to prepare that, okay. that question, but it's probably one of the animated ones because they're hit and miss. Although a lot of them are good, but some of them are hit and What's miss. What's that Netflix one you hated that I loved about the moon? Oh, yeah, that was awful. It was a How Raya, dare you? Was it Raya? No, no, that was not Raya and the Last Dragon on the Moon. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, yeah, I know which one you're Man on about. the Moon. The cow jumped over the moon. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I remember what you're talking moon about. Moon is made of cheese. That I don't know. Bad. I like that movie. There's, there's, there's some bad ones, but most of them are pretty good. Um, so we will get to that. Uh, we'll, we'll give the Golden Globes a little bit of time here uh, to get some nominations or some awards out. Um, They've given three out so far. Ooh. Ooh. Best picture, Film drama. Film or TV? TV. Actually, oh. both. They've given out both. Oh, okay. Uh, the ones that have been, uh, best supporting actor mm-hmm. in a motion picture, picture and best supporting actress in a motion picture they've given out. Mm-hmm. And supporting actor in a television series. Kevin James. Oh, be Kevin James. Be Kevin James. Be he, Kevin he, James. He's oh, never supporting. He's always the lead. Oh, that's, that's true. true. That is true. As he should be. I mean, that guy's a acting genius. Uh, Brian, did you uh, get caught up on Tulsa King? Uh, I just have the finale left. Damn it. You're like maybe an episode ahead of me. Okay. Okay. We'll talk next week. Yep. We will have it done. Supposedly there's a big twist in the finale. I can. I, I kind of have an idea what it is, but... Um, Sylvester good. Stallone's been dead the whole time. And he sees dead people. <laughs> no. No. Oh. He's just haunting Tulsa. Well, Tulsa is pretty haunting. It is the Paris of the Northwest. Does water hurt him? <laughs> <laughs> He's not an alien, Jeff. He's a ghost. <laughs> How is Tulsa the... <laughs> what of the mid of the, the Paris. northwest Paris of the northwest? That's hey, what he said in the in the show. Is it northwest or midwest? Oh, okay, it's not midwest. <laughs> it's I mean, I, not northwest. I, I didn't know if he was <laughs> being southwest? funny. Or, okay, so that's it, him from the not even in northwest Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Okay, so it's a 
TV joke. Got it. Yeah, uh, basically gets sent there, and like the mob was like, "Oh, it's perfect. You know, it's Paris. It's like Paris. <laughs> so you'll be fine." Um, Jim, will you watch anything? No. Okay. Jeff. Um, I probably watched something. Okay, good. Good podcasting here, people. I started White Lotus. And uh, we're two episodes in. Um, You'll never finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I Actually, watched the whole thing this month. <laughs> no, no, we will because my wife is watching it with me. So then we we find something to yeah, watch. Yeah, but if she decides she doesn't like it, is she going to continue watching it? I don't know. The first, or, or if she really likes it, she's going to watch it on her own. Uh, that's true. No, she's usually pretty good about waiting for me. Uh, I think she saw an Emily in Paris when uh, on podcast night. Um, but I, I uh, we're two episodes in uh, about a Hawaii a resort in Hawaii. Well, uh, careful! It's uh, like an anthology, so after the first season, it's all new characters and everything. Yes, in the second that's what season. I keep hearing. Um, I li- I like it. I like those type of settings, like that you can interchange stuff. Like Ghost, not, it's not my favorite show, the sitcom, but I like that it's a uh, bed and breakfast that you can bring new guests in if you want. You can do that stuff. It's like so your heart. Big fan of the Love Boat. I actually kind of. I like the scripts are a little bit more deeper. And mm. Fantasy Island. The original, not the new one. Yes. The new one is horrible. But not Gilligan's Island. No, I like Gilligan's Island because they always had somebody there. But so, how? So, somehow they kept having guest stars, <laughs> you know. They, how did the guest stars get off and there just was, leave them there? They, you, you think one of the guest stars would have been like, yeah, that's like seven people on this island back there. You might want to go get them. Remember? I always like that they have headhunters trying to get them, and then after a while, like, we never talk about them again. One episode, that's it. It's like you have, like, eight different headhunter tribes. Oh, we know which island they're on, the one that that, pr- that priest went to and tried to uh, colonize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twice. <laughs> he was, uh... Did he win the uh, floppy that year? Uh, for yes. Worsley? He won yeah. the Worsley Award yeah. that year. Yeah. Do not... Push your religion onto a tribe that does not like other civilizations. Just, just that, a tip. That is that that will kill outsiders that come onto their yes. island. Yes, that's don't go back twice. That was a bad move. That was a bad move. After your Bible saved your life from the first arrow, mm-hmm. <laughs> that should cool. be a sign. It should be a sign. <laughs> it, w- it was not to him. <laughs> Here's or your it was sign. the wrong sign. It, it's not a sign to go back. <laughs> it's a sign to stay away. Paris of the Southwest. That's what it was. Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is Jennifer Coolidge Stifler's mom in the second season? Yes. 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 She's in every season. Oh, White Lotus. Okay. I don't know. I can She's take her. Constant, right? I don't want to give spoilers. Okay. Okay. Have you but watched? She it? gets. Brutally murdered, like you can see her insides. And- oh, okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. No spoilers. <laughs> so she survives. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not going to answer that. I feel like in every the two episodes that we've seen, she's just playing an extension of Stifler's mom in it. That's all she's playing. I, I did read an interview with the her. with the showrunner where he said that he was just with Jennifer Coolidge on on a vacation or something mm-hmm. and. And she was being herself, <laughs> and and as she was being herself, That's very aggressive. Uh, <laughs> he was like, "This would make a really good character." <laughs> so he wrote the character like he after wrote, Jennifer Coolidge's real life, real life, and who she really is, which kind of seems like Stifler's mom and everybody else. <laughs> Steven Zahn's in it. Has a good cast. So. We've been, I mean, we've enjoyed it enough. I Something Audrey that Plaza's been, in the second one. Who? Audrey Plaza. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So something that hasn't been said too often. Steve Azan is in it. It has a really good cast. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he in uh, that Bigfoot movie that we he watched? He wasn't in that. Bi- he was the star of that Bigfoot movie. Uh, you know, Bigfoot commits. Strange Wilderness. Yeah. Bigfoot commits. <laughs> Harry uh, and the Henderson. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, he committed suicide in that film. Bigfoot did, did. Yep. by shooting, getting shot seven times, <laughs> hanging, and <laughs> caught on fire. I think. Um, I did watch uh, Jeff. I did see one Oscar film. This well, actually, I've seen a couple. I saw one last night. The Menu, or is that a Golden Globe? That's a Golden well, Globe. The Oscars haven't given. Oh, her. okay. It's up for two Golden Globes. Ralph Fiennes and uh, Ray Fiennes. Eh, it's, until he comes Fiennes. on the show, it's Ralph. And the chess Mr. player Feeney? chick. Yeah. Anna de Armas. Anna de Armas. Yeah. From Knives Out. Yeah. Oh, okay. The new one? Or no, from Knives, Knives Out. Out. Oh, okay. No. 
Anya. What's she in there? Taylor. Anya Taylor Joy. Oh, Anya yeah. Taylor Joy or? Yes. Anya Taylor Joy. Oh, the not che- Anna the Armas, the chest, no. the chest chick. Okay, somebody said Anna the Armas. I assumed I did. you were talking about somebody you know. Oh, and uh, Anya T- Taylor Joy. That's who it's in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so s- magic. Yes, the <laughs> Gathering. Um, have you seen the menu, Jeff? I have not. Brian, but no. But what's it nominated for? Uh, su- supporting actress and or best, supporting best actress catering in catering. a. Comedy slash musical. Sorry, actress. Yeah, lead actress. <laughs> comedy musical? Yes. Comedy or musical. It's neither. I thought it was a comedy. Mm. I thought it was a dark comedy. It's a very, very dark comedy, but it has to be funny, I guess? No. Oh, okay. Comedy doesn't necessarily mean funny. Um, <laughs> it just means everybody doesn't die at the end. It's not a tragedy. <laughs> well, it, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was there. I'm like, I watched it. I was like, put it on the poster. Yeah, <laughs> I watched it. I was like, eh. It's kind of like how Jack Nicholson won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama mm-hmm. when he won for About Schmidt, and mm-hmm. he said, "I thought we were filming a comedy." <laughs> is that the one Kathy Bates gets naked in? It is. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that one. So if missing you, out. The menu is on HBO Max, if anybody wants to see it. I know Brian was a big fan when it first came out. Uh, I said I, that I would wait until it became available to stream before I watched it. I think you ripped on the trailer for I it. I did. <laughs> it would, I just didn't understand. I didn't understand it. It, it didn't doesn't look, look good. good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just very, like, I don't know, like... I get what they were trying to do, but it wasn't. It didn't. They did not perfect it. No. It was not. I will say the trailer, the movie, the trailer is selling probably isn't good. So I'm hoping the movie is actually better than what the trailer makes it seem to be. It's one of those films that if you watch, you're like, okay, that's fine, whatever. Because like, like the, the premise intrigued me, but the trailer wasn't good, so I'm not sure where to go for that. I think there wasn't enough depth into the whole purpose of what the whole show was about. That was my issue. So, um, Brian, do you watch anything else? Um, I started a show on Apple uh, called Truth Be Told. Okay. Uh, it's um, about, um, it's a true crime podcast. Like the, it's... Um, Is it a documentary? No, it's it's just a show. Okay. Um, what's the lady's name that's in it? Nancy Sorry. Grace. No, uh, Octavia, Anya Taylor Joy. Octavia Spencer. <laughs> okay. Um, she's the host of this true crime podcast, and she's investigating a murder, mm-hmm. going back because she thinks the guy that got convicted was innocent. Okay. Um, it's I'm like six episodes into the first season, but it is really, really good. Does Martin Short and Steve Martin show up in it? <laughs> they do not. Uh, it's Octavia Spencer, Aaron Paul, Lizzie Kaplan... Um, and a bunch of other. We're moving equipment around. People. Uh, okay. Uh, are in it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is that a drama? Yeah. Okay. It's probably not a comedy like the menu. No. Um, no, it's really, really good. Uh, and I. And you say it's a series? Yeah, there's two seasons are already out, and the third is oh, getting geez. ready to come out. Jeezel. Um, okay. But yeah, is... it's it's really well done. Are you through the first season? No, I'm okay. uh, up to the sixth episode of the first season. I didn't know if it was like a continuance each season or... I'm not sure. Okay. Um, if it's like a new story, like each season is like a different like podcast. I, I'm gotcha. not sure. I And I didn't really want to look ahead because, I, I mean, yeah, I like it, so I don't want to like spoil it or, you know, I just... <laughs> That's what I kind of did with White Lotus. Like everybody's been talking about it. I was like, I don't want to see any spoilers... And I knew that, like, there's new people coming in. But, yeah, that's the same thing. Like, yeah. But, um, no, Aaron Paul is, like, I haven't, re- I've avoided watching a lot of things that he was in after Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Just because he was so good in Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he was, did some, like, weird stuff after. And I just, but this is really the first thing that I've, like, focused on that he's done. And, man, he's, he's so good in it. Um. He was in Westworld. 
Not that you would know, because you know why? I got paid for it. <laughs> you know why? Because nobody sees it now. <laughs> That's, like, the thing now. Like, every day I see something about a network that filmed a second season of something yeah. that they're not moving forward with. Well, Westworld is just, oh, we filmed it. Uh, we have it. We showed it. HBO Max owns it. No, we're not going to show it. Forget it. All, they, that, all that stuff that HBO Max isn't showing is going to their new streaming platform with Discovery+. Plus. You think it's that all that? I've read an article on it. Now I can't find the article. Hmm. <laughs> it was, like, deleted. I think they said that's coming out in summer is yeah. when they... Uh, they're so they're going gonna to put stuff on it, like all the Looney Tunes, all the those cartoons they've dropped. It's uh, going to be a free one. They're going to put stuff on it to drive people to that. So then they can probably eventually charge people for it. I gotcha. I gotcha. I hope so, because I need to finish Westworld Season 4. <laughs> I need to, or the last season. So Need to? Really? Yes. Yeah. Well. You can finish Jessica Jones. I, I will say, Season 3, I was, uh, I was okay with. Like, I really enjoyed it. Um, once the ending came, so I, the ending was fine for me. I could just been, I could just pretend it's that's the season yeah. series finale. True. So understandable. Blake, anything for you? Uh, let's see. I'm glad I didn't waste my time on the college football playoff last night. Instead, I was watching old 1883 Yellowstone episodes. Oh, it's pretty and? good. I like it. Well, how, I, how far I, are I like you in the Yellowstone? Series more than I thought I would. Yeah. Seriously. And then I'm watching 1923 as well. And those are new episodes coming out on Sundays. But did you finish 1883? No, I'm starting it. I'm like four or five episodes in. I think if you do 1883, then 1923, because I think... Well, and I, I have no idea. I think I Tim McGraw's character is Harrison Ford, but I'm no. not 100% sure. No, I already, I already figured that out. Okay, never... Well, spoilers! Spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Didn't mean care. to. It's okay. But yeah, and they're still in Texas. You're a year I told you. Yeah, exactly. Hey, five episodes in, we're going to Oregon. Yeah, eh, we're just going to be in Texas. Pretty, pretty good, though. But, but I do have some other dire news here. As mm-hmm. we record tonight, the entire industry of the tabletop role-playing game is in a, a turmoil. Why? Because... Uh, Answering the OGL? That's right. Wizards of the Coast, owned by that evil uh, gaming company, Hasbro... Hasbro. Has decided basically what they've done. They, they, I guess they got new brand uh, managers and executives there. Said, you know what, D and D is under monetized, and we're losing a lot of money. But what they don't understand is the importance of network capitalism, where everybody makes money. So what they're doing is so what what helped D and D take off back in the early two thousands is that re- get reinvigorated. Got reinvigorated. Well, one well. Wizards of the Coast bought TSR, which owned Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. right? And they're going bankrupt anyways. And so Atkinson, who made all his money in Wizards of the Coast with Pokemon, he's the guy that brought Pokemon to the United States and also did Magic the Gathering, right? So he got all that money. He's a big D&D fan, saw an opportunity to buy TSR, bought TSR, saved it, and then basically came out with third edition to basically bring it up to date, but helped it out with an open gaming license, Right. Basically said, here you go, we're putting out this game, but everybody else that wants to make products for it, go right ahead and we'll all benefit. And so you're right, it did help reinvigorate uh, the Dungeons and Dragons. It came back, right? Gen Con got bigger again. Um, There was a minor setback with 4th edition because they didn't put that in the OGL and they tried to take all the money they could for that and obviously it failed, so they rebooted 5th edition. COVID happens. You know, everybody has to stay at home. What are you going to do, right? So D&D takes off in the 5th f- edition, right? And so what they're seeing is they had profits last year of like over $1 billion. Okay. Right? Profits, not revenue. Okay. Profits, right? So what they've done is they've looked at D&D and they've said, hey, you know what? We're under monetized. We should be making movies. We should be doing Yeah. We should be controlling our own virtual tabletop because right now there are several virtual tabletops out there that players can use in order to play D&D together over the internet, you know, or with Which friends around the country. They own stuff. the rights to. They should be able to make Correct. their own virtual tabletop, but you're going to say... Correct. They didn't, so they bought D&D Beyond, which was, you know, not directly owned by Wizards of the Coast, mm-hmm. but licensed to do so. And so when I looked at what they did with buying D&D Beyond, they are essentially saying, you know what, we're going to get into the virtual tabletop business. And I went, uh-oh. And this is basically what came out. So if you look at this... They delayed the release of the Dungeons and Dragons movie because I think they were going to come out with this, you know, we're canceling the OGL. 
which basically what this means is a horrible thing for third-party publishers and small you know, developers mm-hmm. and games, right? So this would affect almost everybody in the entire industry except Wizards of the Coast and D&D, Hasbro. So what they're saying is if you're a company that makes over $750,000 in profit, you're going to pay us 25% revenue. That's before your expenses, <laughs> after you pay it off. That's not profit. Mm-hmm. And if you are publishing D&D, this is what they want in this new OGL 1.1. They want to sit there and take, you can go ahead and publish it, but guess what? If they like it and you take off, they'll tell you to stop publishing it, and they'll take it, and they'll publish it, and they'll make all the money, and they don't have to pay you one cent. So basically, Is it guy like a mob? Yeah, basically <laughs> what it is is they're going to try and monopolize. Uh, well, has that been released yet, or is yeah. this still the leaked... Now this is a leak. This is a leaked memo. But what's interesting is that everybody's responding to it except Wizards of the Coast. Mm-hmm. So I, what? What I, is that? So what does that mean? They can come out easily and say, "Hey, no, this is not real." Or whatever. But I think what I read was yeah. people from Wizards of the Coast. Their main platform again. They don't want to. Their goal was not to hurt the third party, uh, mm-hmm. but it's to prevent people from monetizing it on stuff like. Uh, Bitcoins and stuff like that on uh, what are those F, F-, F- NFTs, NFTs. NFTs. non fungible yeah. thingies because people start Tokens. making NFTs yeah. using likenesses and stuff and right. that's one thing that they're attacking to try and stop. What about like Critical Role and and things like that? Well, that's affected. That's affected, but mm-hmm. they but they're also off. Uh, Cr- critical Role will come to an agreement with. With, but uh, yeah, but that's but that's a problem. There's a lot of big industries out there, are, there, oh, definitely there that are independent publishers that are you know, with fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. There's like, there's like they, they, you're you're affecting Pathfinder. Really you're yeah. affecting Kobold oh, yeah. Press. No. You're affecting Thirteenth Age. You're affecting tons of games, and exactly the individual virtual tabletop industry. Uh, people who use the VTTs and produce content for the VTTs. As well as you know the models and the books like Goodman Games would be like another one that's would be hugely affected and 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 it does include people if you're making money off of a podcast of a video game uh, not a video game of a of a tabletop D and D game and it's monetized they can take that over according to this 1.1 OGL and basically you know basically say we're going to take it over and ho- monetize it i hope ourselves and i hope that uh, hasbro's not listening to our podcast right now well, except for the simple fact of the matter is the only <laughs> thing that that the vid, that the uh, tabletop game can actually uh have under it, it is you can, you can't copyright rules mm-hmm. so you playing a game out on mm-hmm. the in the world even if it's filmed they can't copyright that. There's nothing they could do to stop you. You just can't use their uh, specific uh, likenesses of things like that that they do have copyrighted. Yeah, but so that, but they not... do have what's called the, the SRD, the Standard Rules, right? And yeah. that's what that's all under the OGL 1.0. But I'm just saying, like, if, if you're doing a live stream of it, as long as you yeah. don't mention specific if you don't read the rules specifically on your yeah. thing if you don't use like their copyrighted uh like monsters or something like beholders well, that's, or that's going to be hard but it's, it's actually going to be doable easy. it's very doable you, you can come up with your own thing but it's not or, really or you just to switch be... to a different system exactly but it's not going to be you know true D&D. do you think well, who gives a fuck better. if it's true D and D? well exactly well a it, lot of people do that's it, the thing well they're the ones that, that you should play the riverdale there. version they had a whole game there yeah. no, 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 on no. the show the whole thing is if it's a fantasy role-playing tabletop or tabletop role-playing yeah yeah but, uh, but f-t-t-r-p-g do, yeah do you think though since this leaked do you think there's going to be such a public outrage that they're going to stop it? Oh, it it's happening. The outrage is, is there. It's, and it's already there online. There's going to be such an outrage probably. that they just won't do it. I, uh, yeah. Or well, they'll fix it. Yeah. D- depending leak. on like the authenticity of the leak, mm-hmm. never know if it is true or not. Well, correct. Well, that that's the problem. Maybe they had this in development and somebody yeah. leaked it. Or they were looking at this and maybe seeing what would happen and somebody leaked it. But the, but the problem is this has been going on uh, for several days now. At least 
Well, this has been going on for several months now, but the leak came out the, a couple uh, this past week. Well, they knew. I'm well, well sure they knew the commissioner's office who did it. Somebody yeah. from the commissioner's office. Well, they, it. they knew. Fidel. They knew D and D ones come out right. They're doing coming Fuck out D and D ones to be retro to fifth edition. So everybody knew a new edition was coming out. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. been in the uh, play, you know, since August of last year. Yeah. And but I don't, nobody was expecting that they would try and, and revoke the OGL. The well, open gaming license. They knew they were going everybody. to redo the open gaming license for one D and D. That was not a secret. Is it going to? The thing is that they're talking about making it retroactive to all previous. It editions. is retroactive, according to the well, according I've seen to the league, which was, that was online. what the surprise was. Everyone knew they were coming out with this harsher OGL. Does that affect your games at all? It won't affect anybody playing it. No, I'm just talking like. If you're if you're like playing your, your, like your virtual tabletop or anything like it that, it could affect virtual tabletop it could have game providers. Rate. Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that and that's that's the problem. So if you're looking to monopolize that, you, where you restrict everybody else from not being able to use D and D, where they make you do D and D one online, which is what maybe they're well, no one even wants doing. to play D and D one anywhere. You're... Yeah, not yet. Well, he figures out you know all the other editions, well, except for fourth, basically took off, but. But the but the thing is, is that it is retroactive to uh, the previous editions and everything else too. Is what they're trying to make it. So now here's the, here's the question: If you were running a multi-billion uh, industry and this supposed quote unquote leak comes out, you know why wouldn't you put a statement out that says no, 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 that's not true, that's not because right. it's going through legal right now and they're trying to revise it. Could be. Who knows? You're right. So what they're trying to do is that the OGL 1.0 license was written as unrevocable mm-hmm. but they're trying to go through the legalese and mm-hmm. trying to get it uh, nullified anyways to say well it says unrevocable it doesn't mean it's not unmodifiable correct right correct it's a 1.1 so if you are going to come out you know this big major industri- in- mm-hmm. industry wide change to everybody you know why all the secrecy and say no 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 that's not true that's not whatever so so there probably is something behind the OGL 1.1. Now, is it going to be the full screw everybody, you know, open gaming license, or are they, or are they going to take it and go, well, okay, let's modify this and try to make it more workable, you know, for people, you know. So I know, you know, you know reading things from like, uh, you know, like Cobalt Press or uh, even with regards to Foundry, a lot of these people, you're, it's not official yet. That's right. Nobody knows that that's real. And so all of a sudden, this entire industry is thrown into a period of uncertainty. And then you're right. If they do go with it, with what they're talking about, then you are getting, you know, movements to create a new, basically, RT, you know, RPG game that's outside of D&D, but it's not D&D. Kind of like what exists already, like, you know, like 13, 13th age or... Like is this going to affect me and Brian beating the game in 30 minutes? Correct. You're going to have to come up with a new strategy. Damn it. I, I have something that's even more, more breaking right now, something even more controversial. There you go. M&M's new packaging is causing a stir. <laughs> the green M&M's are holding hands. Oh, with, I thought you meant no, the uh, M&M's rap artist. M&M's is making a statement with its latest candy pack, which features an all-female set of characters, oh. including purple. What is purple? What the fuck is Can, purple male? Uh, do they have a purple M M&M and M character yet? That's new. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that I, the big I, controversy? I can't believe they're celebrating women everywhere. <laughs> is that one of the complaints? I, hmm. I I don't know why people are complaining about this. Yes, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday's M M&M and M controversy was the green and yellow were photographed holding hands. <laughs> Well, I'm not kidding. This well, the, is the world the where the green's in. a woman and the yellow's a man. No, they're both women. The yellow was the peanut. Yeah, was the yellow was a peanut that was once voiced by John Goodman. Yeah. Okay. He played Linda Tripp. <laughs> I'm Saturday <Night> Live. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, what's the bigger controversy, D and D or M and M's? That's a tough call, Blake. It, not to rehash it, but in all honesty, I have no. I, one seems manufactured. <laughs> which one? <laughs> Yeah. Well, obviously, Wizards of the Coast is yeah. manufacturing the D&D. It's all corporate bullshit. What they're going to do is they're going to come back, they're going to come out with a re- say this is not this was not accurate and they're well, going to do a revised version of it of the leak and I they're going so. to say look at us. We saved you guys. That was not right. Look. This I, is I think did. I think that would be a good idea. 
you it's going to happen. They, they, but... had, they had three plans. One of them was to completely fuck everybody <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and so they leaked it to see the reaction. They're like, ooh. Plan B. I, plan B or C. Uh, uh, like the people are saying, we might have to go to A here. <laughs> yeah, but but you're right. You know, the, the report and the strategy is that they believe they're under-monetized. Yeah. Right? And so they're coming out. The, the, the plan is come out with more D&D movies. And do and you just saw like you TV we show. just posted on our Hobie yep. they're coming out with Paramount Plus TV show. Yep, his your bad uh, ideas. You know, Facebook page. Yeah, that's right. Broken on Hobie's page. Yep. And you know, so they're coming out. They're so basically what they're doing is and I always wondered why D and D never came out with a VTT, but obviously now they are. And not only are are not only they are now they're gonna try and fuck everybody with it, mm-hmm. but yeah. maybe not. You we'll know, see, we'll see how it goes. You well, know, you know what they're going to do. Plan B and C are actually worse than Plan A, Jim. And then everybody's going to be like, "Oh man, Plan A works. Let's go. We're fine. We're fine with it." <laughs> My favorite cartoon during the Cartoon Express was always D and D. My favorite cartoon during growing up on Saturday mornings was D and D. Okay, now truly important stuff, Brian. What did you think of the Twix uh, cookie dough? Cookie dough. I wasn't. Um, told, I wasn't told I was allowed to eat it yet. It tasted like a Twix. It was very little. Very, very limited little difference. Cook, cookie it, dough. It tasted more like like a. I say it tasted like the Oreo uh, Twix. Yeah, I agree. The cookies and cream. Cookies. Yeah, and cream. I agree. Yeah. Like it wasn't it uh, legit. Like I, mm-hmm. if I wouldn't have seen the package, I would have just said it's a, it's a Twix bar. Uh, you yeah, know, I, I thought the same thing. I I love the fact that Scab Jeff is actually trying to be, you know cognizant of chewing into the microphone. He's actually, like, chewing away from the microphone. <laughs> well, I'm I'm like, cover, I cover mine. Yeah, don't you know you're supposed to chew directly into the microphone no. to get that one out of five stars? That's right. One star. Can't believe Jeff ate a Subway sandwich. So, this, <laughs> And I do it again. I can't believe you're cracking beers on the microphone. <laughs> so this Twix definitely ranks below the peanut butter Twix. Oh, God, yes. Normal oh, Twix oh. ranks below peanut butter Twix. Everything ranks below peanut butter anything. Uh, supposedly... Peanut butter nipples? Ooh. Ooh. Well, it depends. Do you keep your peanut butter in the refrigerator? Yes. Then it tastes bad. I'm not allowed. My wife won't let me. Good, because your wife's intelligent. You know what else is intelligent, Jim? Going to the Cincinnati Comic Expo September 22nd through the 24th. Get your tickets in a couple months at the CincinnatiComicExpo.com. You know who's going to be there? Scab Jeff. You know who else is going to be there? Hobie. You know who else is going to be there? Hayden Christensen. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, these, these are all just yeah. rumors. Wednesday Adams. Jen uh, Ortega? Ortega? Yes. Or Christina Ricci. Christina Ricci. Yes. She's going to be there this year, right? Uh, Christopher she Lloyd. Was. Michael J. Fox. Dibs on the blue room. There you go. That's a green room. Uh, <laughs> you get the blue room. <laughs> I got the blue Speaking room. Speaking of blue, James Cameron's going to be there. Talk about Avatar. Okay, so none of these people are confirmed. <laughs> Most of them are probably not even being approached. But if they were, think of that. We could be breaking news. <laughs> I don't know. If, if you approach Jenna Ortega, you'd probably get arrested. Blake definitely would. Blake would. Blake would. <laughs> She's nowhere near uh, Kristen uh, Chuck Bell. E. Cheese right now. So. <laughs> uh we're also on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast, too. Uh, you can follow us. Uh, we have a poll of the week every week. Twitter poll of the week this week was, what is your favorite present-day daytime gay sh- game show? Whoa. Stop it. <laughs> Stay on target. Uh, game show. Uh, we had Let's Make a Deal, Price is Right, Family Feud, and something that I saw on TV, 25 words or less. Out of these four choices, 25 words or less is the best. Is it? In my opinion. Oh, who, who hosts that? Um, is that Meredith? That Meredith Vieira? Yeah. Meredith Vieira does 25 words or less. Um, it's only been on for four years now, Jason. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, in last place was 25 words or less at 0%. Uh, let's Make a Deal had 10%. And winning, the price is right over Family Feud, 50% to 40%. Uh, I'll be so, honest. When I made this poll, I thought there would be a lot more daytime uh, talk 10 shows. 10 people voted? Game shows, I mean. Uh, yeah. This was a very <laughs> low one because I did it a quick one. Because you did it at... 
Yep, at six thirty. Yeah, and put in put eight minutes for people to vote. Uh, the issue was that I thought there would be a lot more game shows out there during the daytime. There really isn't. It turns out we all work during the time that they're on. <laughs> That's the true. Well, there is a bunch of them. They're on the Game Show Network, and they're all in syndication. I was going to put the match game from nineteen seventies in there, but I didn't. Well, I mean, you didn't put People Puzzler. People Puzzler. Yeah. Where's that? We well, you, you didn't put the one because I don't like the Leah Remy watch the whole time. Uh, America says. America says. I do like America says. Do like it, oh. John Michael Higgins, who did horrible on Celebrity Jeopardy. It, it, not as bad as uh, the people who are on this past week with uh, Michael, Michael Sarah won. Oh, I did watch would, that one. And he wouldn't have won any other matchup. Yep. Um. So there you go, uh, Brian. You got something over there? I I do not. Oh, you look like you were very intent on saying. Something. Um, he was thinking real hard. Oh, okay. Or he was pooping. One of the two. Don't do it in here. It is Tuesday. Uh, he only poops on Tuesdays. Blake! That's after he drinks a bunch of fireballs. Let's do some listener feedback. <laughs> All right, Scab Jeff, you know what that is? I don't. Of course not. That's the sound of bad public relations by Hasbro. All right. <laughs> We're going to start off, Scab Jeff, with this one person. You know who that is? Number one fan. A pans seven. Can't give seven. Eight, eight. Formerly yeah. known as yes, Big D. A pans. Formerly known as co Canadian of the year. Oh, dad, dad, <laughs> Big D. Chili Billy, the man who always delivers. The postman. Oh, Carl Malone. Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> Doug rings thrice. Ooh, ladies. All right. There are rumors that the show, Undisputed, is scripted. Is it really scripted, or is Skip Bayless truly that hated by Shannon Sharp? Both. I could see Skip Bayless truly being that hated by Shannon mm-hmm. Sharp. I would probably have to watch the show, Undisputed, more than 13 You don't have to. You don't have to. To figure out if it, it is scripted. It's, it's basically forced opinions. You know, one person has to pick one side and the other person has mm-hmm. to pick the other. So it, I would say it's semi-scripted. Yeah. So they, they force someone to take one side whether they yes. agree with it or yes. not? Yes. Oh, well. Or else you don't, have, you don't have a show. It's like a debate club in yeah. high school without the talent. Ah. That's basically what it comes down to. True. When you have me rooting for Shannon Sharp, that's an issue. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure if I'm really drunk or what, but not many of those words in that sentence that 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 Doug just wrote make any sense to me. <laughs> it's, it's a, a sports-related un- thing. Uh, undisputed, scripted, or <laughs> undisputed. Payless, uh, yeah. Sharp, hated. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> that's why he's a Golden Globes expert. That's right, and gentlemen. The name of the show is Undisputed. <laughs> the hosts are Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. They sit around and talk about uh, sports-related uh, topics. issues, topics. And apparently when they take a side there or they pick, come up with a topic, they f- tell the person what side they need to argue is, I guess, what we're yes. deciding. Okay. And then they argue for a half hour. It's kind of like when Blake talks to any of us. This past week, <laughs> apparently, Shannon Sharp really went off on Skip Bayless. So, like the view. Yes, like the view. It's the view for sports. <laughs> with, with, with less voices. I'd rather have Star Jones in there, though, <laughs> than Skip Bayless. This is like the view for podcasting. Ooh. Ah. And the weird we're, thing with Skip Bayless, who's a complete turd, uh, mm-hmm. allegedly. Yes. Stupid idiot moron. Allegedly. Is like... His brother is a celebrity chef, Rick mm-hmm. Bayless, and he's the 100% opposite, 180 yep. degrees different. It's so weird. He's like soft, quiet, and mm-hmm. unassuming, and never argues to almost a fault where like sometimes like when they're doing cooking competitions, it, like if someone's ruining his dish, he's not going to scream at him like his brother, and it's like... You sure you guys are related? I feel like that's you and Jim, though. You guys are not competitive at Shut all. Shut up, Jason. Sorry, my bad. I'll go in the corner now. I feel like 80% of that is probably just his, just because of that's who he is on TV. Skip Bayless? He's playing a character. Yeah. It's, it's a shtick. He's yeah. paid, yeah, he's paid to give an opinion, whether you like it or not, and the more you talk about it, 
the more he gets paid. He gets paid. I mean, between, we're sitting here talking about him. He so gets paid he's exactly. something, right? Would you I mean, would you sell out to do that character? He, he five to seven million me into getting my Twitter account suspended for calling him a stupid idiot moron. Well, there you go. So, so Skip Bayless is a person, yes. not an action. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I like that. What are you going to do? I'm going to Skip Bayless today. <laughs> Skip Bayless down to the grocery store. <laughs> what else you got, Blake? So there you go, Doug. <sighs> you know what that sound means. It's been a minute. It's been a while. Time from Devin. The Psy Guy. At Podman Big Dev. My top five from last week. Which was the most, what you were uh, most looking forward to, films in Cor- 2023. Correct. Number five. Number five. Trump golden shower video. Down the hall. I don't want to see any golden shower video. Mm. I agree. That mm. yeah. Mm. It could be like the two hottest people in the world. Mm. No. What about no. On Betamax? On Betamax it would be hot. <laughs> you gotta do fix the tracking though. Uh number four, anything with Ana de Armas. Number three, oh. anything with Ana de Armas. <laughs> number two, anything with Ana de Armas. Number one. Anything with Dar- Anna Dara Moss? She was in the menu. So, yeah, so like the menu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait. Is Dev one of the people suing uh, the studio that made yesterday? Probably. I believe so. I think he's uh, one of the claimants, yes. Yes, although I don't think he lives in Arizona, so it might be difficult. He's not a but... woman from Arizona? Oh, it was women? It was two women from Arizona. Because she was not in that show. She was in the previews, but then when it tested her. They didn't like the role that her character was in, so they cut they cut her character out. Let's sue that. Let's sue. Uh, what else you got? I guess now all they have to do is, in a trailer, just have a disclaimer. Not all images will be in the final product. Uh, like WWE and AEW has, subject card, uh, card subject to change. <laughs> well, you know, they do. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good. Man, it's been a minute since that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what that felt like. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> All right, so anyways. <laughs> good, no, I was just uh, going to break some WWE news. What's that? Uh, Stephanie McMahon resigned. Are you fucking kidding me? Nope. Vince Bre- McMahon's taking over. Breaking? Didn't my, didn't our sisters tell us that at dinner tonight, Jeff? Yes, yeah, she did. Well, you know what that means. Vince selling. is coming they're back selling. to creative. Or they're selling. they're selling. They're selling. Who buys them? I keep thinking it's got to be Comcast with Peacock. Yeah, NBC. Yeah, Comcast. They keep saying. Maybe Jeff Bezos. They said Amazon's actually looking. Maybe Elon Musk. Yeah. He's going to trade him Twitter for it. Do you think they'll <laughs> trade, <laughs> trade Vince McMahon Twitter for the WWE? He, he, has to, up? he has to verify how many actual real wrestlers there are in WWE. <laughs> Could you imagine Vince McMahon in charge of Twitter? <laughs> he doesn't even know how to log on. I don't think he's going to be worried about it. Uh you're required to take steroids <laughs> if you have an account. In order to get a blue check mark, you have to <laughs> take <laughs> store steroids. Uh, Change approved. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say about the, the movie trailers, right? Yeah. Wasn't there several years ago a big push and scandal in regards to video game trailers? Yes. Being uh, held accountable for actually showing what video graphics look like Versus these trailers that they're putting out for video games so, for that had nothing to do with actually what the game looked like. Most of the stuff, weren't they just like showing cut scenes that look real cool, but so if you, the action of so the So video game. games have to put a warning at the bottom that this is a cut scene or not actual footage. This is like raw footage or test footage. Correct. They so have a- to put that in. So after this lawsuit, it will have to say, Anna de Armas, not really in this movie. <laughs> Possibly not in this film. <laughs> Possibly not in the final cut. <laughs> you know what you should do then? Just do a montage of every actor and actress out there and just say... They they may not be in it. <laughs> they could be. It, it, it's, I, a, I it's, want, it's like a mystery box of a video of a movie. They should do something at the Oscars, like the people who died. They should do the, the people, people who were in the trailers but didn't make it into the movies <laughs> and then show their scene from the trailer. Change approved. I went back and I watched the trailer for uh, yesterday, yeah. and she's barely in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, it's just a quick cut. Yeah, yeah, she even have a line in the trailer? Or? No, she, didn't have, she was sitting on the couch next to... Uh, the character when they were on, like, uh, yeah. Conan O'Brien. One yeah, the on the talk show. Yeah. Or Ana de Armas doesn't need any lines. <laughs> There's she one line. Anya Taylor-Joy. 
True. <laughs> uh, what else you got here, Blake? Okay. Uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt 666. It's not evil. He's just handled that way. One of my favorite moments in wrestling from the Attitude Era, which was how, what years? Uh, it's 97 through 2001, I think is what they call it. Uh, cool. Was Mick Foley beating The Rock? Mick Foley from uh, the, the radio show? I'll say no. The wrestler? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what radio show. I don't know show what radio Mick show Foley. Mick Foley's on. It would have been great if I could remember the title of the radio show. Mc... WKRP? No, not WKRP. Not WKRP in Cincinnati? <laughs> Channel 12? No. <laughs> the one with the dead comedian on it. John Lobax. Replaced by John Lovitz. <laughs> <laughs> news oh, radio? News radio? Get out. <laughs> Anyways, um, what's one of your favorite <laughs> moments? <that's> Dave Foley? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dave Foley. I, I, Nick I, Foley. I, they look I, a lot alike. I, they do. I, I One's tried, Canadian. <laughs> I tried following up with another bad joke. Okay, yeah. pop. <laughs> beating the Rock for the title on Raw. Mm-hmm. What is one of your favorite moments? I'm gonna tell you what my favorite. Moment. What is that? Uh, when uh, Y2J first made his appearance on uh, WWE. And your least favorite event, or was when Scotty Too Hotty got jumped and didn't make it to the yeah, ring. Yeah, well, that was the worst Royal ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say Jericho's a good one. Steve Austin coming down with the beer truck and just flooding the ring with beer. Just because any, keep... any of the the things well, that he did, like the Zamboni, yes. was amazing. The yep. beer truck. What about the uh, Kurt Angle with the milk truck? Milk truck milk was truck. funny. <laughs> what What about when uh, Brian Pillman shot Steve Austin? I thought it was good TV. I yeah. Uh, never aired again, <laughs> ever, <laughs> or referred to ever nope, again. Nope. Uh, that one time, the Undertaker was buried alive. <laughs> that one time, and then that other time. And well, that, that that next time. How about you, least favorite when Undertaker no sold? Remember that one time he no no sold, and again and again and again. The best match mm-hmm. during the era, I think, would have to be Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys in the Tables, t- Ladders, and mm-hmm. TLC match. Yep. I agree. Or, uh, or uh, the Foley uh, Undertaker, Undertaker match, Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. <laughs> that wasn't even a good match. It was just uh, monumental for what happened. It was still a pretty good match. The Undertaker sold that match. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he, he actually did. Because his opponent was unconscious, and he still made it look something. Only for, happened. like, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was unconscious. Um, I did like The Rock jumping out of the dumpster when he became a good guy. I forget who Kane was beating up or whatever, and they had a dumpster. It was a dumpster match coming up, and he flipped open the lid, and he jumped out. Uh, that was a good one. So, Brian, what was your favorite moment? It doesn't matter what your favorite <laughs> moment is. <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that. Ooh, you fell for it. No. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> wow. It's like my first day all over again here. <laughs> yeah. Six months ago, you were fighting guys by the name of Hooventude, and you think you can come in here with the big dogs? <laughs> um, Randall Holt also ha- Oh, sorry, Jim. Go ahead. I thought you had something. Brian, you're still the F and G. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So just like uh, Jason Newstead, after using Metallica for 18 years, they were still hazing him. I wonder why he left. <laughs> Don't leave, Brian. Um, uh, uh, Randall Holt has a question for you, Blake. Ooh. <laughs> he Specifically does. Specifically for Blake. Blake. Specially for you, what are the chances of the Cleveland Browns uh, winning in the playoffs this year? What's the chance? <laughs> <laughs> he asked. <laughs> Zero. Oh, Randall Holt had the question. I, I understand completely. You know, though, right. during that last week, I was cheering for the Browns to beat the Steelers. Yep. And I was cheering for the uh <laughs> Bills? Uh, no, who's? I was cheering for the Bills to lose. Yeah, uh, for the Raiders. No, no, wait, no, no. no you want right. the Bills no. to win? I wanted the Bills to lose. So New England lost. I wanted the Steelers to lose, and I wanted Miami to lose. And there would be five teams tied at eight and nine for the last. Uh, Who would get it? Spot. Well, I think New England was. No. Nine. Then you wanted Tennessee to beat Jacksonville. Oh, if Tennessee beat Jacksonville. Yes. And then Jacksonville would have got the uh, last spot. Really? At eight and nine. Wow. Nine, oh, there would have been six teams tied at eight and nine, and Jacksonville would have gotten the tiebreaker in those. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I mean, is, is anybody really surprised that last game of the season with the Browns having something to play for to knock Steelers out, uh, that Steelers would win anyways? Uh, Anybody make, really surprised that the Browns would lose? I mean, come on. Make you feel better. My other team, the Arizona Cardinals, are a dumpster fire right now. So join, True. So, uh, it brought me great better. joy to see uh, the Cleveland quarterback throw multiple interceptions into triple coverage. It's a shame. It's a shame. I, I love seeing it. Makes makes me so happy. I'm sure he's going to turn it around, right? Personally. Like, professionally. Everything. Uh, so... With your Arizona Cardinals, mm-hmm. who's going to be worse, Ugh. the Cardinals or the Rams Ugh. next year? Uh, are the Rams disintegrating? Because I saw a report that uh, McVay was not interested or was thinking about not yeah. coming back. He and t- then the U.K., the offensive coordinator for the Rams, who came from Kentucky, mm-hmm. U.K., just went back to Kentucky. And Raheem Morris, the, the defensive coordinator, is interviewing for coach, head coaching jobs. Oh, they're not just head coaching jobs. The Rams uh, are giving them all permission to find other jobs, including the same, like... Oh, the horizontal same, movement. The horizontal yeah. movement. Yeah. The same lateral position. movement. You yeah. can, you, they can block lateral movements, and the Rams are allowing them all to find other jobs. Um, Blowing it up. He's not, he's not coming back. McVay. Well, well, we know uh, uh, Arizona's coach isn't coming back. Or their general manager, thank God. Yeah. Or did the general Steve manager now. get fired, or did he step away for health reasons? Uh, it's health reasons, but uh. then they said um, the rumors are that when they went to Mexico City, him and a couple another assistant coach did not do um, great things down there. Also, the, the assistant coach they fired before he even got to the game? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Supposedly, he may have been involved or known about it or something. That's the rumor, allegedly, so oh, we're not going to say. He didn't know about it because the guy got fired before the game. Like, well, I think he might have been, lo- the GM might have been more. <laughs> so do you think guilty. that the uh, uh, owners and general manager of Houston should have let their players and coaches know that they wanted them to lose? Oh, that's the rumor. That's, is that's why Lovey Smith a, yeah. got fired because they were saying. lost the number one pick. He was going to get fired was anyway, wasn't he? But. Yeah. He he what did not. Ex- stupid was that? It was stupid. You could have had the number one pick, but no. he wasn't having the number one pick. Well, I, I, he was losing correct. the job. These players are fighting. He helped, I, he helped out his old uh, zero, Chicago Bears. Zero players show up to a game and try and lose. Yep. Uh, Brian, what were you going to say? No, uh, Lovey Smith. <laughs> they uh, interviewed him before that, and he had zero like thought that he was losing his job. He expected yeah. to be back. And I mean, I guess like they kind of have to say that, but like he played he was it me- to where he like one hundred percent thought like he was good to go. He was meeting with the owner all week. They said, yeah. like trying to keep his job. Oh okay, yeah, what else oh, we got, well. Blake? What else uh, we got? But you know, I'm no expert on the Rams, but they did go all in a couple years ago with the free agents and Stafford and everything. And they won. And maybe Stafford's medical conditions with his concussions mm-hmm. may be a little more serious than than people know. And maybe what McVay's he, like, I don't want to be here for the rebuild. I, I built no. it up. I won the Super Bowls. Now I'm done. What rebuild? They don't have first round draft picks for the next couple years. Yeah, they're correct. Gonna be, we're, that's where the Browns are going to be here. And <laughs> we are there. Real quick here on the NFL, let's all give a props to Matt Ryan, Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Um, they asked him if he was going to retire today, and he said he laughed, and he's like, "Nope, not at all. Why? Because in March, uh, well, first off, if he gets cut." He gets $12 million. He has one year left on his contract. If he doesn't get cut by March something, it's another $18 million. Of course this guy's not retiring. He's getting the $12 million, at least. Get wow, paid. that was bad of a contract for Indy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be like Arizona who has to pay Cliff Kingsbury through for 20, five more years. 2027 yeah. to go away. Sorry, I saw a good meme with uh, his girlfriend. Say, yeah, he gets paid through 2027 to hang out with her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Green Bay only owes Aaron Rodgers $57 million for next year. <laughs> and, uh, that's why they can't bring in any other offensive free agents. That's a shame. So, Jeff, how does it uh, feel to be on Sports Talk with Hobie? <laughs> Are the Browns, is that a sports team? <laughs> no. It's a, big, it's a big pile of crap. It's a big mistake. Just go to Professor Number One. Let's wrap this up here uh, quick. Go to uh, Professor Number wait, One. Wait, wait. What about no. Steve? We'll do that next week. Oh, we Steve. got that next week. That's true. Uh, you know, I was going to ask, ask you know, Scab Jeff the secret of advancing player characters to higher levels 
Nope, we gotta go expeditiously. Next, next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Professor number one and doctor number one. You know, Scab Jeff, this is who we always end, you know, listener feedback with. I'd know that if I listened to the show, wouldn't I? Exactly. Shot it. Just learn that legally the Speaker of the House doesn't have to be a member of Congress. I thought they changed that rule on purpose to block out that ass. We're right until proven wrong. Could you promote that intern Brian so we can end this nonsense? Who's intern Brian? I don't know who that is. Lord Chancellor Brian. Oh, yeah, we can promote him. Brian? Although I think Lord Chancellor of Hobie is a higher seat than the Speaker Speaker of the House. House. I can guarantee it will take me less than 14 tries to be nominated. Took you less than that to get promoted. I'm just saying. Yeah. When I said that asshole, I was not referring to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Are we so sure about that? Uh, Jeff, give me some news of the geek. News of the geek. Uh, Jeff, it's Golden Globes time. It's uh, they're they're ongoing right now as we're st- talking. Who's got who's got their phone up about the winners? I have it up. Okay, that's what she said. Uh, let's see here. Be- so we're gonna get real. She has it up. What? So are we gonna get real time feedback on Jeff's picks? Yep. Yep. <laughs> we are. Awesome. Uh, best motion picture animated. That's what we're going with. Jeff, you're picking. Here we go. I give that you the one options. Has not. Oh, yep. That is just been given out. Just been given out. Ooh, good timing. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. That's gonna win. In you o. I'm giving you the other options. In you o. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. I like that title. Title's great. Yes. Oh, that's what Jenny Slade. Uh, Puss in Boots, co- colon, The Last Wish. I saw that. It's decent. I, I, I saw it. I didn't like it, but... It uh, shouldn't be up for Best Picture, but it was decent. And Turning Red, uh, the Disney panda yeah, film. I, have you seen it? I haven't. I'm going to have to watch it because it's, it's going to okay. be up for the Oscar. Oh, you don't have to watch it. I, I've i seen every movie nominated <laughs> for an Oscar for the last two years. Do you have to see years. it from beginning to end, or can oh, you yeah. just turn it off I like 45 minutes through because... It doesn't uh, appeal. I I have to watch it from beginning to end. Uh, so what pi- what one did you pick? Uh, the Guillermo del, del Toro's Pinocchio. All the polls says say okay. that that's by far the front runner, and I think it was. But and it, was it won. Ah, Jeff got one vote. You Jeff, you keeping count of this? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I've got it marked. I've okay. got my pen. Uh, best supporting actress in a motion picture. Uh, has this been picked? Uh, yeah, that was the first one picked. You said. Okay. <laughs> Angela Bassett for Black Panther, colon, Wakanda Forever. Carrie Condon uh, for the Banshees of Inshireen. Uh Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Really? I thought it would be for Halloween Ends. Uh, no, you didn't. Dolly Parton for Triangle of That's Sadness. Dolly de Leon. And Carrie Mulligan for She Said. I'm going to guess Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, I'm not saying that she was the best, mm-hmm. but uh, I know Entertainment Weekly said that she was going to win. Variety said that she was going to win for sure. So I'm going to say her just to try to get the point. But they were wrong. Angela Bassett? Oh, uh, was it the Carrie Banshees Mulligan? One? Angela Bassett for Wakanda uh, Forever. Ah! Oh, they went that way. Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture. Brandon Gleason for the Banshees of Insurain. Barry Keegan for the Banshees. Brad Pitt for Babylon. Oh, God. K. Uh, K. Hu Kwan. Everything, every, everything, everywhere, all at once. And Eddie Redmayne for The Good Nurse, I'm gonna go, which is a sequel to The Good Doctor. I'm going to go Brendan Gleeson for the, the Banshees, although I have heard that Ki Hui Kwan might have won because of everybody loves him. Who won? Ki Hui Kwan. Ah. Man, you're one for three. Damn. I like this live performance, like this live time. (laughs) Uh, Best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical or comedy. Diego Calva for... (laughs) Diego Calva for (laughs) for Babylon. Daniel Craig for Glass Onion, colon, Knives Out Mystery. Adam Driver for White Noise. Colin Farrell for The Banshees. And uh, Ralph Fiennes... For the menu. Um, Ray Fiennes. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty confident about... Uh, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Okay. Colin Farrell. Colin, Colin Farrell. Who Colin, won? Colin Farrell won. Hey! Back on the winning side. Day. And I haven't seen all those, but I've seen most of them, and he deserves it out of those. Best performance by an actress in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. They probably haven't done this one yet. Leslie Manville for Mr. H- Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Margot Robbie for Everything. Uh, Anna Taylor Joy for the menu. Oh, she's in it. That was uh, the other one. Emma Thompson for Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. 
and Michelle Yo, 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 Yo. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm gonna guess Michelle Yo. Michelle Yo won. Oh, wow! Three, three and two. Okay. Uh, best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama. Kate Blanchett for Tar. Olivia Coleman for Emperor of the Empire of Light. Viola Davis for The Woman King. Anna de Armas for Blonde. And I think she was in the menu. Michelle Williams for The Fablemans. Fuck The Fablemans. Screw that movie. Jeez, old Pete. That's a Steven Spielberg film they just made to win an Oscar. Screw him. God, I, I'm so tired of seeing this fucking trailer. Do you, you have you an opinion movie? on that? No. Then shut up. No, I, I didn't see it, so I can say it. I did see it. <laughs> How do you like Spielberg? It was... It was bad, but I'm afraid that it was purposely bad. Like, you know how you see great artists make a picture that looks like a, a three-year-old could mm-hmm. have drawn it with crayon? And it could have been that. I need to watch it again. <laughs> I really do need to watch it again. <laughs> so what, are you pick, what, what, who oh, are you no, picking? I, I, it's possible that Michelle Williams might win, but I'm going Kate Blanchett. Okay. That one has not been chosen yet. Oh, but Kate Blanchett, so we got Circle Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Suspense going here. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, best, uh, sorry. Uh, best best per- performance by, an, sorry. Not God. B- sorry, best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama. We have Austin Butler for Elvis. Brandon Frazier for uh, The Whale. Uh, Hugh Jackman for The Sun. Bill Nye, the science guy, for Living. And Jeremy Poop, the inspection. Nye. Well, oh, same thing. Uh, I'm going to go Austin Butler, although I didn't see it. In the... Austin Butler won. Hey, got that one right. I didn't see anything special in Elvis, really. I didn't even think it was a great Baz Luhrmann film. Uh, I do like Baz. Uh, best screenplay by uh, motion picture. Tar. Everything, everywhere, all at once. The Banshees of Inchirin. Women Talking, and The Fablements. Fuck you. These have not been... Okay. I'm going to go Banshees. I think that uh, okay. Martin, uh, he just, he's the one who did three Martin awards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that they'll give it to him, although Everything Everywhere All at Once could could win. Uh, Tar could win. Fable wins <laughs> is crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Best Director of Motion Picture, James Cameron, Avatar. Ugh. Daniel Kwan, Daniel Scheinert for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Baz Luhrmann for Elvis, Martin McDonough for Banshees of Insurance, and Steven Spielberg for Fuck You. I, the Fablemans. I think they're going to give it to Spielberg. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. oh, yeah. uh, best picture, musical or comedy. Hello, my baby. Uh, they have Babylon, The Banshees of Insurance, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Glass Onion, and Cola and Knives Out Mystery. Didn't realize that. Triangle of Sadness. I've actually seen all those, and mm-hmm. uh, all those are really good. <laughs> but I think Banshees is going to win. I think Babylon was the best, but I don't think it's going to win. I think Banshees is going to win. Banshees. Bl- Blake is rooting for uh, the uh, Tri- uh, Triangle of Sadness, but he's just referring that to as a factory of sadness. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a documentary. Uh, best picture, motion picture. Here's the big one. Drama. I've only seen three of these. Avatar. Well, did you see Avatar? I did not. Okay. Have you seen the first Avatar? Yes. <laughs> then you've seen the second one. <laughs> Except it's in water. Oh, so there's even more blue? Yes. <laughs> so yes. watch Avatar while taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Avatar, colon, the way of shit. Elvis. Water. The Fablemans. Tar. And Top Gun Maverick, colon, Maverick. How is Top Gun nominated? They're giving this one to the Fablemans, aren't they? I think they might, although Variety said Elvis is going win to it, win it hands down. And, one Avatar is winning it. And I think that I think that Entertainment Weekly said that Top Gun's going to win this. <laughs> wow. Uh, but I'm going to go Fablemans. Ugh. Does that and hurt? I think that everybody said that Tar deserves it, but I haven't seen Tar yet, so I can't. Does that hurt saying the Fablemans is going to win? It may have been great. It really might have. I need to watch it again. <laughs> okay. But it was like there's this scene where they're having problems in the family or whatever, and then 
the mom's crazy and she gets a monkey for some reason. The monkey's going crazy <laughs> around the room as everybody's arguing what? back and forth. And it, any director ever can make that a, uh, an important scene. Like, just you could feel gravitas in the scene as everybody's talking and, and the monkey's jumping around. And this was not that at all. But Spielberg, as much as I talk sh- shit about him, he can, he can actually direct. So he could have made it better. Which leads me to believe that there was purpose in that because it's about him coming into becoming a better becoming director, a better director. So I need to watch it like again. Like a fourth wall thing. It, there's just layers here. It's, it's like, like an a onion. parfait. Oh, a parfait! Like a it's glass not, onion. Not a glass onion. No, no. Oh. I, I, I prefer it not be like a glass onion. <laughs> well, Jeff, I'm glad that you're here this week because we have a great. I'm here every week. Scab Jeff, I'm glad you're here this week because we have a sp- nice article here for you. Jim, courtesy of Jim. Yep. He gets it from Movie Web, where he gets all of his news from. No, I just, South Park was talking about it, I think, so I had to Google it. Google it. It was some movies are simply made to be watched over and over again, like The Fablemans. Could be because the plot is so dense and confusing that it takes multiple viewings, whatever. But on the flip side, some movies, watching them is once is just enough. These are Movie Web's top nine films that you can only watch once for some reason. The question is, does that mean these are good movies if you watch it once, but they're not things you can continue Correct. to watch? Correct. That's what so it is. You, you, you think they're claiming these movies are at least worth seeing once. Yes. I, I would disagree. Watch it once for the fun, and then watch it twice for the look for the clues that you missed the first time around. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, well, rec- depend- not as smart as Jeff or Jim. It depends on the movie. I mean, these movies are not ones you really want to look. Well, for the there's for. some reasoning here. Hold I on. I think this could have been a top five, but we did do this for a top five. We <laughs> did. Okay. Yeah, I checked. I I g- remember? Yeah, we. I remember. Yeah. Uh, rec room for a dream. If anyone needs a reminder that <laughs> that drugs are bad, they can uh, and ruin someone's life. Watch That's Darren Aronofsky's. Ass. I, I remember the first time I watched that I if it had if that that scene where it built up real real bad if it had gone on for another ten seconds I would have thrown up in the movie theater. It includes an arm amputation, shock therapy, yep, mental that's, delusion, that's and that's a scene. <laughs> disturbing sex work scene. Ass to ass, sex, ass to yeah, ass. Sex mm-hmm. uh, Six cents was number eight. Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Spoilers. Uh, once the audience knows the twist after the first viewing, return <laughs> to the film. spoilers before you say no, no, the no, twist. No. <laughs> uh, knows that after a first viewing, returning to the film is entirely a different experience. No, I'll agree. That's one, I think, watching it a second time to catch up on the... Except if you figured it out in the first so two I'd, minutes of the movie. I previewed... Oh, th- he dead. <laughs> I previewed this with my brother when he used to work at the movie theaters. Yeah. And everybody knew there was a twist, but they didn't know what. And one of the people we were watching it with literally for the first 45 minutes kept yelling that it was a time travel film. And we're like, but those are like 2001 cars. Like, they, they, their cars are the same. Like, why are we... It's not time travel. No, no, he's in the past. No, he's not. <laughs> Stop it. And I'm like, there's there's a big twist coming up, and based on the, the ads, we all know he sees dead people. Bam, a murder in the first two minutes of the movie. <laughs> oh, he dead. He's dead. <laughs> is the twist going to be he's dead? Because he's dead. <laughs> uh, number seven. This is a good one. American History X. Uh, it's a tough watch. It deals with racism, hatred, injustices in the prison Bite system. The curb. It was tough watching once. Yes. I, I would not watch that again. It's. I've seen it like four. I was going to say of, of the of these nine movies, mm. I've seen that one probably eight, ten times. Norton is so damn good in he it. He is. The, everybody is so, so good. So far, every movie we've mentioned, I own on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Machinist. Yep, I have that one too. <laughs> most common thing to come up. Uh, most common thing to come up when talking about this is Christian Bale's dramatic transformation, dropping sixty pounds in his role. He's an insomniac factory worker. It's bleak. The film. Uh, Bill Aids Bale's character is suffering not just from his lack of sleep, emaciated frame, emaciated. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Emancipated. Yes, his frame is free. <laughs> go, go free, frame. Speaking of Christian Bale, mm-hmm. I did watch The Pale Blue Eye this week, and there was a big twist at the end of that movie. Is he dead the whole time? Well, no, it's a mystery who done it, and I, I'm not allowed to give away the spoilers. Okay, good because I haven't seen but it. But it does include um, 
the Harry Potter, Harry Potter's uh, evil uh, cousin that the you know little fat boy. He actually oh, play, plays. Ed, yeah, he actually plays Edgar Allan Poe in this uh, murder mystery. Because Edgar Allan Poe at West Point, uh, of course, with Christian Bale's character as the detective that br- is brought in to dis- solve a s- series of murders. I Would you watch read, it again? I think we read this uh, synopsis last week. Yep. Would you watch it? Oh. <laughs> no wonder it sounded familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch it again. Okay. So but it does not make only, this list. But maybe, you know, you would only have to watch it once. Okay. I mean, it's okay. It's not great. It's not bad. Oh, like the menu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff's favorite film, uh, Scab Jeff's favorite film, Schindler's List. No, no, his favorite film is number one on the Oh, list. yeah. Uh, another one, Antichrist. Uh, Danish director Lars von Trier. Are, uh, his films are dark and disturbing. Also, blah, 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 blah. Are oh, dark. You mean Lars von Trier? Yes. yes. Okay. His or films are dark and disturbing. Jason dis- said. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, a speech impediment. I think he sounds like the Hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Antichrist. Uh, number three, The Blair Witch Project. Uh, I watched that again recently. It's I not, did, too. It's not bad. It's not bad. Jeff and, or Jim and I were talking about this with Brian, and, like, off air, and, like, Blair Witch, like, first time we saw it, I really loved it. When you see the, you know, the twist going in, it is kind of, like, it's not bad, like, knowing the twist, but it seems like there is some boring moments in it. I'm not sure there's a twist to it. Well, no. not the well, twist, but that the found footage type yeah. uh the, the fact that it wasn't real is the twist. Well, it kicked off the whole found footage. Yep. Yeah, oh. it wasn't real. Yeah, they, they, they played it off as real. Mm. But, all right, can I give a survival tip for everybody? Yes. You know, when you're, leave, when you're, not, when you're making a found footage film mm-hmm. that's real, or not found real, footage film. found, footage, found film. footage film, that's right, and you're in the forest, you're lost in the mountains, if there's some strange fucked up shit in the, in the trees, turn around and go the other direction. Yes, and or wipe, and wipe your nose. And wipe your nose. Two, go to a stream, start walking down yep. downstream with the water. Follow the stream down water because that will always take you to civilization. Mm-hmm. Boom. There you go. Thank uh, you. That's true. Follow the stream and eventually you'll at least hit New Orleans. Follow the stream of <laughs> snot down your nose. <laughs> it depends where you're at on the continental divide. Oh. <laughs> or the Great Lakes. Survival talk with Blake. <laughs> uh, number two, Sho- Shoah. Uh, is that right? That's how I would pronounce it. Okay. Oh my God, I got it right. As a documentary, have you ever seen this, Jeff? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, Israeli documentary, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's about the uh, it's uh, they interview survivors and civilians of the Holocaust that have lived through it. Gives a first hand look at one of the darkest periods in history. I'm not sure it's something that you don't want to watch again. I feel well, they say it's also nine and a half hours long. <laughs> well, you can also watch uh, what the new. Uh, Documentary by uh, what the guy did baseball, uh, Ken, Ken Burns. Burns. Ken Burns on his Holocaust in America. That's I think came out tonight. Oh, okay. Or, huh. Where it doesn't paint the United States in a very good light on how they dealt with Holocaust survivors. Is it a movie or a series? It's a series. I documentary. Believe. Yeah. There's a, well, documentaries can be. Movies I think it's a. Th- too. I, well, no, I. <laughs> I think it's a three part. Okay. So I think they said three part movie. <laughs> uh, and <A> trilogy. <laughs> uh, and Scab Jeff's favorite film, a Serbian film. We've talked about this many that times. It's difficult to watch more than once. I feel like every time you Is show up on the podcast, to watch once? Once? it's very difficult to watch the first time. I feel yeah. like every time you show up, we have to talk about this film. <laughs> it isn't difficult because I've never seen it. You or should. Heard of it. You should. I will not. It's, it's difficult. An, it's easy to not watch once. It's yes. an uplifting yes. film. Well, there's your homework. Go if, watch a Serbian film. If you film. listen carefully, you can hear the little boy's anus ra- er, break. Nope, 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 nope. I think we have a title for the show. <laughs> nope, nope. Do not watch the Serbian film, ever, ever. No, I, I, just I feel that I told Brian. you that. Don't ever watch one. it. Don't ever watch never it. Never watch this film. Never watch yes, it. You did tell us to never watch it. Brian, and I what are we doing here? I... I, this is I. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> are you having a stroke? You okay? <laughs> he was just expecting to get interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, harumph. <laughs> give me some box office news. Uh, you want music for nah, it? Just, just fucking it. go oh, into okay. it. 
uh, box office news report of January 6th, 2023 through January 8th of 2023. We have coming in at number one, everyone's favorite blue meanies, Avatar, colon the way of water, making $45 million, a total of 517 domestically, over $1.5 billion internationally. On a budget of four hundred million dollars, it's going to hit two billion. It will hit two billion internationally. Can't yes. believe this many people have seen this film. I think they they, they like it internationally. I mean, over a billion already now yeah. in the international market. Stop seeing it. They 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 really like it. Probably the Chinese. Stop watching Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What else? Uh, Megan made thirty point two million on its opening weekend on a twelve million dollar budget. So Megan did good. Good word of mouth. I, I M three good reviews. Uh, number three, Puss in Boots: colon, The Last Wish made thirteen point two million, a total of eighty eight million on a ninety million dollar budget. Okay, think it'll at least get its money back. Yep. Coming in at number four, a man called Otto made four point two million, a total of four point three million, <laughs> on a budget of fifty million dollars. I think it's going to be hurt because it's also going to be on streaming services next week. I think it'll be up for Oscars. So. Yeah, it will get a little pump, a bump, but not much. How much of that fifty million was? Uh, what's his name's salary? Tom Hanks' salary of the fifty million, probably twenty. High nah, he's probably no. He's not as high as he used to be now. And he does a lot more pieces that he likes. But, yeah, he's not doing blockbuster stuff. Yeah. The, the article, the headline was, A man called Otto, Tom Cruise at his... Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks at his... Uh, what? Grumpiest? Oh, it was like his most... Uh, uh, like... Oh, I forgot the curmudgeon? word. Curmudgeon? Yeah, pretty much f- curmudgeon. Just okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. His most Clint Eastwood like. <laughs> His my most lawn. Grand Torino. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off my lawn. Now what else? Uh, coming in at number five, we have Black Panther: colon, Wakanda Forever, making another three point four million, total of four hundred forty-five point five million on a budget of two hundred and fifty million. I apologize for not listening to the show, but has anybody seen that? Is it? Yeah. Good? Uh, it's a three-hour-long film about grief. Is it? It's 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 really about two one? hours and forty five. Sorry, minutes. my bad. <laughs> better than the first one. Um, oh, wow, I never actually compared it to the. first It's different one. than the first think. one. I, I said, liked it better than the first one. I said no, not as good as the first one. I liked the first one a lot. This one's a whole different feel to it. Oscar worthy. Uh the fir- the lead actress Letitia Wright. Loop. Peter? Well, it's Golden Globe worthy for uh, best support. Yeah, actress. Letitia Wright. Sorry, yeah, yes, Letitia yeah, Wright yeah. was. The, yeah, she was the main star. The Peter yes. Nyong'o played a different yes. character. Yeah, yeah. Um, Letitia Wright is probably the best. Uh, she did a great job. I'm not a huge fan of her, but she did a really great job. Brian, did you see it? I haven't seen either one of them, so I can't tell you. I'm still in phase 1.5 of Marvel. You only get. Brian thinks they're the same. <laughs> to be fair, you only have 87 films and TV shows to catch up on. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah, no, I'm good. Any, I mean, you'll be fine. I, I catch right and he's up. Still closer to finishing that than Jason is at finishing Jessica Jones. That is true. 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 Oh, Jessica Jones was so good. I know the first five episodes were amazing. He didn't even finish the first season. I could have even let him not watch the second, third season. David just, Tennant is amazing. He's the best villain of all time. Mm-hmm. In any in any movie, TV show, book, probably should go back and watch it. <laughs> no, no, no. The best villain is an avatar. Moving on. Number, uh, what's coming up, Jeff? Uh, we have coming up January 13th, The Devil Conspiracy. A cult steals the Shroud of Turin what? for wicked purposes. Well, you don't steal it for good purposes, do you? <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that, Jeff. I thought you said wicked. <laughs> yeah, for wicked purposes. Well, the best thing about that is I thought they've already proven that it's a fake. Allegedly. Well, see... Just because you have science to back you up doesn't prove anything. <laughs> what else is coming up? Not when faith is involved. So look, they stole it. Okay. <laughs> we got a backup here. We just made another <laughs> one using the uh, <laughs> same uh, 3D printer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also coming out, House Party. I thought that came out in the 80s. 
<laughs> it is a remake. Uh. A high school student decides to host a house party while his parents are away. A remake of the 1990 comedy. It's at LeBron James's house. house. <laughs> while his parents are away, don't they have it while LeBron James is yes. away? Yes. Yes. And plane. Time out. The greatest oh. title ever. Mm-hmm. Plane. Hey, it takes place on a plane. What should we call it? Plane. Sounds good. Well, Let's go. airplane was already taken. That's true. <laughs> A pilot finds himself caught in a war zone after he's forced to land his commercial aircraft during a terrible storm. They should have called it commercial aircraft. Well, it is Gerard Butler, Mike Coulter. Gerard Depardieu. Mike Coulter's cool. Jason might know who Mike Coulter was if he watched Jessica Jones. Yep, I knew him. And Joey Slotnick is in it. Ooh. The bitter beer face bitter guy? Bitter beer face. Uh, he's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> His parents said the same thing. You're still alive, son? Uh, top five. Uh, Je- sorry, Jim, do we have any updates on the Golden Globes? Okay, on the Golden Globes, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, we got a bunch of the uh, TV. television. TV ones are given out. Did you want to pick TV shows, too? Or? No. <laughs> the Carol Burnett Award was given to Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was going to get it this year. I really did. Julia Garner won for Ozark for supporting actors. Nope, we need movies. Zendaya won for Euphoria for uh, uh, best yeah, act- lead really actress. Same. Most sure depressing film ever. It. Or show. Austin Butler, Pinocchio, Michelle Yeoh, Colin Farrell. <laughs> You've been sheltered with depressing <laughs> <laughs> with not watching depressing shows if you think that's the most. Well, you look at that, Jim. Went to Brunson, won for uh, Abbott Elementary for uh, oh. Actress. I like that show. Jeremy Allen White won for The Bear. Nice. All right. Yeah, Go The play. Bear. Natu Natu, M.M. Kiravani, and Chandra Bose won for RRR, which is best song in a motion picture. Ah, we didn't have that one on our list. Oh, you, you got to listen to it. It's it's spectacular. RRR? The, no, the, the the song. Yeah, I haven't R- seen. R- it. I haven't R- seen. R- it. It's an Indian film. I, oh, I hate yeah. Indian films. Like I, oh, I hate them so much. Justin <laughs> Hurwitz won for best score in Babylon. Tyler uh, James Williams won for best I've got supporting his, actor. I've got his autograph. And that's all that's been given out. Okay. Uh, top five this week. You know, in Bollywood. Oh God, no. Top five this week. It is favorite Jim Carrey films, which I thought we did. We have never done this one. No, we haven't done Jim Carrey. Yeah. Uh, so, Jeff, Scab Jeff, you can go first. Who's your number five? So it was films, not counting TV? Correct. You can do whatever you want. Do it's whatever you want. It's Toby. It's fine. List. Okay, my number five, then, is going to be Kick-Ass 2. That, oh, shoot. That's on my list. Hold on. I gotta find where. Yeah, my phone's in the other room, so I'll be making this up off the top of my head. It is not on my list. Kick-Ass 2 was, uh, number three for me. Good that job. was my number one. Number one? Really? What's your number five? Nothing. <laughs> wow. He does not have. He does Ask not have. Ask me what my number four was. What? Nothing. Nothing. He has one movie of Jim Carrey's. He wow. Liked. Jeff is correct. And that's Kick Ass Two. Yes. Brian, number five. Uh, number five for me would be me, myself, and Irene. Okay. Okay. Uh, number four or number five for you, Jim? I'm sorry. Number five for me is going to be Pootie Tang. Is he in that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Jim made his own list. <laughs> Number five for me is Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> because uh, he plays such a weird character, and I'm like, what the hell is going on in this? So, uh, number five for you, Jeff. Uh, number five for me is The <laughs> Truman Show. Uh, Fuck you. Uh, that's my number, that's my number one. Three. Three, I think. My number one. Yes, that's my number two. Put it on the board. What's your number uh, four? Uh, my number four is the cable guy. Cable guy. <laughs> uh, my, I hate that movie. <laughs> my number four is the majestic. That's uh, my number two. Yeah, number two. yeah. Put it on the board, people. Love the majestic. Not many people see it, but it's a good show. Uh, number four for you, Jim. Any given Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was my number four. <laughs> <laughs> that was Elizabeth Berkeley. <laughs> Have you figured out what my list has in common yet? No. Uh, number four. Uh, number four for me, Bruce Ooh. Almighty. I figured out Jim's list. What is it? Films not featuring Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> that Jeff, is part of it. 
What was your number four, Brent? Bruce Almighty. Oh, okay. That was good. That was decent. I like that movie. Not the sequel. Don't watch the sequel. I very much enjoyed Steve Carell in the sequel to that. Stop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff, er, Scam Jeff, number four. Uh, I had Man on the Moon as my number four. That's an honorable mention for me. Uh, what's your number three? Uh, my number three was uh, Truman Show. Ah, just watched that the other day. Really enjoyed that. The, the other day, the I other week, because you told us last week. It was last week. It. Yeah, last week. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't know. The days blur together. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Blake, number three? Good. Uh, Brian, number three? Uh, number three for me would be... Huh? The Majestic, Sonic the Hedgehog, Kick-Ass 2, The Truman Show, Man on the Moon. Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber 2. Dumber and Dumber. No, he wasn't in that. Oh, one. okay. Number 23. Oh, that's a dark one. I like that. Uh, Jim, number three. The Last Boy Scout. Oh, he was really good in that. No, he wasn't. Uh, number three for me was Kick-Ass 2. Uh, number three for me is Once Bitten. Toy Shy. Is that when he's the vampire? That was when he was yeah. the vampire, yes. That was a good one. Uh, number not two? Really. It's oh. not, but it's a nice early 90s. Is that 90s? The number two for me was The Majestic. Okay. No, I was, that was 80s. Was it 80s? Uh, number two for me was The Truman Show. Oh, no, sorry. Dumb and Dumber was number two. Truman Show was number one for me. I love Dumb and Dumber. And I don't even like like toilet humor at all, but there are some scenes in that I'm just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Don't know why. I don't like toilet humor at all. I don't like weed humor, drug humor. I don't like it. I don't think it's funny. But they're dumb they, they pulled it off for yeah. you. Uh, Jim, number two. Uh, the original Dungeons and Dragons movie. Oh, Marlon Wayans. Uh, are these all Marlon, Marlon Wayans films? No. No. Oh, okay. The only one I mentioned that was Marlon Wayans was in was <laughs> Dandy. Yeah. Number two for you, Brian. Uh, number two for me would be Ace Ventura. Oh, Pet I forgot detective. about that one. Or When Nature Calls. Yes, both. I like both. I hobied it. Ah, good nice job, Brian. Job. Yes. Jeff, number two. Blake, Blake do you have a number two? Asshole was great. Nope. Okay. Inspired uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. Grab? Uh, number two was The Majestic. Yep. Number one? Uh, of course. <laughs> Truman? No. no. <laughs> my Eternal number one. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That was uh, my number one. By uh, far. Not even close. That but was not even close. That was on my honorable mention list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian? Uh, we are not going to get Blake's number one. Oh, Blake, number one. That was kick ass. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, number one for me, Liar Liar. Okay. Number one for me is I'm going to get you, sucker. Uh, my number one was uh, Truman Show. My number one was the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Okay. Were they in living color? They were people from in living, living color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he gave it away when he mentioned the win. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We did have some um, listener feedback. They're going to probably be most of these. Uh, <laughs> he yeah. wasn't in which, that many movies. <laughs> which I know. One, yeah, which ones are people going to say that when we like did 68, not cover? 68 credits in IMDb. And that includes television includes and television, video games. Video games and shorts. So and music out, videos. Yeah, shorts. Bri- yeah, yeah. Brian, ow. It came out to be about 37 movies. Mm-hmm. Brian, ow, from Canadian. He is the Canadian of the Year. Yes. Uh, he has How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Batman Forever, Bruce Almighty, Truman Show, and number one, Once Bitten. I like it. He actually went with Batman Forever. Uh, I Kev- thought about putting that on on my list as a joke. Kevin, uh, since the Explorer had Liar Liar, Ace Ventura, Truman Show, Eternal Sunshine, and Dumb and Dumber. Steve, at Everything I Learned from Movies. Everything I Learned from Movies. Had Liar Liar. Oh, I'm sorry, Ace Ventura, Bruce Almighty, Ace Ventura, uh, the, the original. The first, uh, number five was number two. Oh. Dumb and Dumber and Liar Liar. And Dev. <sighs> he had some different ones. He had Mr. Popper's Penguins. Mm. I, thought I read the book, never that. saw the movie. Number 23. He read the book and never saw the movie, too. <laughs> uh, Rubber Face. I did not see that. That was his first mm-hmm. uh, 
credit on IMDb. Where he played Tony Maroney. Tony and a rub off. And this was an honorable mention for me. Earth Girls Are Easy. I remember watching that late at night all the time, like on uh, Channel 19, Fox. With Jeff Goldblum. Yep. He played Whiplock. And number one, how dare he, Batman Forever. Riddler and Two-Face. Jeff. He did not play Two-Face. No, Tommy Lee Jones played Two-Face. I said My honorable mention was The Office. Oh, the when one that played the he finger was the Lakes guy. guy. Yeah, <laughs> he was good in Kidding. I did kind of like the the show Kidding. Kidding. Scab, it's been a pleasure having you here. It's been like a year, right? I know you're going to have to come back for the Oscars. Before are you, are you coming to the Oscar party? Oscars. Get back to you. That's an uh, official that's invite. A no. <laughs> that's a possibility. No, it isn't. No. You could, when you have you ever trophy. possibly shown up? Could I zoom in? Anytime you. Ha- no. Anytime you have. Said maybe. Mm-hmm. It's a no. Uh huh. Do we have any updates? If you say yes, it's a maybe. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Looks like we do have an update. There is an update. Ooh. Oh, For which For best can. actress motion picture drama. Oh. Oh, here we go. Jeff picked Kate Blanchett, and Kate Blanchett won. Ooh. Good for you. Nice so, what are we? Five of seven? He had two losses. Yeah. yeah. Five, five of seven. Best picture, non English language. We did. Pick that one. Uh, it's going to be uh, all quiet on the Western Front. It was Argentina. Oh, 1984? Don't 1985. cry. Or 1985? Argentina, 1985. Uh, Ooh, I haven't seen that one yet. Scab, thanks for showing up this week. We appreciate it. You said that already. I know. But, but, then, but then we interrupted him. Yeah, we interrupted. And he had to start his thought from the beginning. I did. Uh, Blame concussions. Well, um, can, can you restart? I didn't really get my thank you because you interrupted it again. Too late. Anyways, uh, <laughs> bad idea of the week, number 212. That would be 212. <laughs> <laughs> number 212. Jim, yeah. give me a bad idea. Beachfront Avenue. <laughs> um, having a movie where you star Jennifer Lopez. Oh. Yeah, we, we were going over Jennifer Lopez movies while he was picking his In Living Color list. Enough. <laughs> that might be your best. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> it was not Marry Me. <laughs> Marry he me. wouldn't pick Gigli. Oh. Was she the one in Double Jeopardy, or was that... No, that's Ashley, Ashley Judd. Judd. Oh, Ashley Judd. <laughs> <laughs> I was way off Samsonite. <laughs> it, was, it was almost Jersey Girl, because they kill her off in the first ten minutes. Yes. Uh, by made Snow in Plow. Manhattan? No. <laughs> the Wedding Planner? Is she in that one? Yes. She was. That was better than a lot of Okay, them. we're not doing top five J-Lo films. Because <laughs> there aren't five good J-Lo films. Selena? Uh, that might be her best. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I thought you said enough was. Because <laughs> I haven't seen Selena. Oh. Or uh, enough. Titles for the show. Uh, I had A Bible no. Saved My Life. Uh, not Jason. And... Uh, Stop watching Avatar, and the frame is free. I have Skip Bayless is not in action. <laughs> <laughs> he might sue us for that. And survival time with Blake. What do you mean? He, he, it's true. He's not in action. Can't, nope. <laughs> well, I had Skip Bayless down the street. Nope. <laughs> Skip Bayless down the street. I had found footage film. Or found footage film. Five, five, five. <laughs> five, five, five. It doesn't translate as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It doesn't. And, and I had, uh, if you listen very closely, dot, dot, dot. Nope. <laughs> uh, scab? <laughs> I, I I forgot to write anything down. Okay. Brian? Brian's always good with these. Come on, Brian. Uh, sorry, I was looking up uh, J-Lo's IMDb page. Oh, okay. Uh, Most of those are music. It's I know. with music videos, so it's hard to. Uh, let's see. I, I, had... I thought Scab Jeff was going to be. I don't listen to the show. <laughs> well, Could neither be. do you. <laughs> Brian, what you got? Uh, let's see. I have His Frame is Free. Ah, uh, that's the one I liked. Uh, peanut Butter Everything. Everything. Um, peanut Butter Nipples. Skip Bayless, colon, person or action. <laughs> uh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> And present day gay show. Nope. <laughs> you you didn't said say it. That. You said it. You're going to act like you didn't. We'll be back next week, everybody. Thanks for visiting. Roger says goodbye. Do we have a title for this? His the show? frame is free. <laughs> Moving on. I think we're going with a uh, present day gay show.
Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Hobie.